Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone present here today. With that being said, today my group members and I will be presenting on volumetric analysis for determination of concentration of acid and base for subject chemistry 256. To begin today's presentation, I would like to introduce my group members and I. To start off, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jasmine Elena Ong and my student ID is 2022491818. I am Dania Yasmin. My student ID is 2022287878. My name is Nur Erika Kuzo Ventirozai and my student ID is 2022471746. Hello, my name is Nuri Edina Binti Mohamad Zubari and my student ID is 2022281440. Hi, my name is Amira Arisa and my student ID is 2022838652. Now, I will be moving on to the introduction. Volumetric analysis, also known as tetrometry, is a quantitative analytical method used to determine the concentration of a solution by reacting it with a standard solution of low concentration. One of the most common applications of volumetric analysis is the determination of the concentration of acids and bases through a process known as titration. The precision and accuracy of titration depends on the proper technique, careful measurements, and the correct choice of indicators. This method is widely used in various fields including environmental testing, pharmaceuticals, and food chemistry. This is to ensure quality and compliance with standards. The objective of titration is to determine the concentration of an unknown solution by reacting it with a solution of known concentration. This is achieved by gradually adding the known solution titration to the unknown solution until the reaction reaches a specific endpoint which can be detected by a color change, pH change, or some other measurable problem. Titration is a fundamental analytical technique in chemistry and its success depends on several key components. Firstly, titration which is the solution of known concentration that is slowly added to the analyte solution. It is also sometimes called the standard solution. Besides that, analyte which is the solution of unknown concentration that the titration is being added to and its typical volume is known. In addition, a burette which is a long graduated glass tube with a stop caught at the bottom allows for the controlled addition of the titrant solution in small measured volumes. Nonetheless, an Erlenmeyer flask which is a conical flask used to hold the analyte solution during titration is also a necessary component. In addition, a pipette which is a calibrated glass or plastic tool used for measurement or a transfer of specific volume of liquid. This is used to accurately measure the volume of the analyte solution. Next, a magnetic stirrer is also needed. It is a small device with a rotating magnet that is placed under the Erlenmeyer flask to stir the solution and ensure the titrant and analyte is mixed thoroughly. Lastly, an indicator which is a chemical substance that changes color at the equivalence point, signaling the end of the titration. There are different types of indicators, each with a specific pH range at which it changes color. Now is the example. First is the preparation of acid solution. By using a pipette, we measure a known volume of the acid solution and transfer it to an urban menu flask. The accuracy of the measurement is crucial for the precision of our result. Next, we add a few drops of an appropriate indicator, which is enough to link to the acid solution in the flask. The indicator will help us visually identify the endpoint of the titration by changing color when the reaction is complete. We then fill a burette with the base solutions of known concentration. It is important to ensure there are no air bubbles in the burette. We note the initial reading of the burette, which will be used to calculate the volume of base added during the titration. Now, we slowly release the base solution from the burette into the acid solution while continuously swirling the flask. We need to add the base slowly, especially as we approach the end point, to avoid overshooting the titration. As soon as the indicator shows a sustained color change, indicating that the acid has been neutralized, we stop adding to base. The color of the solution should be pale pink, indicating that the titration is successful. We recall the final reading of the burette. The volume of the base solution used is determined by subtracting the initial reading from the final reading. Now, we come to the applications of the titration. Titration is an analytical method commonly used to determine the concentrations of a solution. An acid-based titration is a method of quantitative analysis for determining the concentrations of an acid or base by exactly neutralizing it with a standard solution of base or acid having known concentration. Moving on, titration is a workhorse technique in chemistry with a wide range of contributions across various fields. For instance, titration is applied to determine the concentration. This is perhaps the most fundamental application. Titration allows for the precise measurement of unknown concentrations of a solution by reacting it with a standard solution of known concentration. 
Besides that, titration is applied in quality control industries. It plays a vital role in ensuring consistent quality of products in various industries. Food manufacturers use it to analyze the amount of salt, sugar, and vitamin C contents in their products. Similarly, pharmaceutical companies rely on titration to verify the concentration of active ingredients in drugs. Lastly, titration is applied in purification of chemicals. This is because titration techniques can be used to remove impurities from solutions. For instance, acid-based titrations can selectively neutralize unwanted acids, bases, or salts. Let me now explain to you the theory behind acid-based titration. The underlying principle of acid-based titration is the neutralization reaction where titrant reacts with analyte to form a neutral product. This reaction is represented by the equation where acid reacts with a base to form salt and water. Next is the equivalence point, which is a crucial moment in a titration. It is the point at which stoichiometrically equivalent amount of acid and base have reacted. Simply put, at the equivalence point, the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base added. The pH at the equivalent point depends on the strength of the acid and base being titrated. To visually detect the equivalence point, we often use indicators, which are substances that change color at a specific pH range. The point when the indicator changes color is called the end point. Ideally, the end point and the equivalence point should coincide, but they may differ slightly depending on the indicator used. Now, let's talk about titration curve. It is a plot of pH versus the volume of titrant added. This curve provides crucial information about the titration process. As we add the titrant to the analyte, we record the pH at regular intervals. These data points are then plotted to create the titration curve. Titration curves are essential for identifying the equivalence point and determining important properties like pKa or pKb. They provide a visual representation of the titration process, making it easier to understand and analyze. Lastly, the different types of acid-based titration and how the equivalent point varies with each type. Let's start with the first. Strong acid versus strong base. In a strong acid, strong base titration, the equivalent point occurs at a pH of 7. This is because the acid and base completely neutralize each other, resulting in a neutral solution. For a weak acid, strong base titration, the equivalent point is greater than 7. The weak acid partially dissociates and the resulting conjugate base makes the solution slightly basic at the equivalence point. In a strong acid weak base titration, the equivalent point is less than 7. The strong acid fully dissociates and the conjugate acid of the weak base makes the solution slightly acidic. For weak acid weak base titration, the pH at the equivalence point depends on the relative strength of the acid and base. The resulting pH can vary widely based on their dissociation constants. Understanding the type of titration and the corresponding equivalent point is crucial for accurate analysis. Each type of titration offers unique insights into the properties of the acid and bases involved. Now, we will explain about the methodology of the determinations of percent content of acetic acid in vinegar. Introductions of the experiment is, vinegar is a diluted solution of acetic acid. Commercial vinegar should contain about 4-6% to of acetic acid. The acetic acid content in vinegar can therefore be determined through titration method using a standard solutions of a base, for example, sodium hydroxide. In this experiment, the acetic acid content in different brands of commercial vinegar is to be determined by titrating them with sodium hydroxide. This experiment is done in order to determine the content percent of acetic acid in vinegar. We are required to use 250 ml polymetric flask, without stand, white tile, 3 of 250 ml conical flask, 20 ml bike pad, and burette as apparatus. Three brands of commercial vinegar, sodium hydroxide pellet, and phenoptenin indicator was also used as the chemical reagents. Preparation of sodium hydroxide solution and standardization of sodium hydroxide. Firstly, best to prepare 250 ml of 0.5 and AOH solution was completed. Then, an AOH was transferred into a beaker and 50 ml of distilled water was added and slowly stirred until it dissolved. Then, the solution was transferred into a 250 ml volumetric flask by using a total panel and flash rod. The beer was filled with an AOH solution and then 20 ml of hydrochloric was pipetted into a 250 ml conical flask. Two drops of phenolphthalein added as indicated. 
SGL solution in conical flush was saturated with an AOH from the burette. The flush was slowly swirled until the color changed and reading at the end point was recorded. Next, we move to the determination of acetic acid in vinegar. 10 ml of the given vinegar jelly was pipetted and diluted to a mug with distilled water in 100 ml volumetric flask. Then, 20 ml of the diluted vinegar solution was pipetted into 250 ml conical flask with the sodium hydroxide from the burette slowly while flask are swirled until the indicator color change. Step above are repeated two more times. Reading at the end point of hydration was recorded. The weight of the volume percent of acetic acid in the vinegar sample was calculated. Result from percent content of acetic acid in vinegar by digestion. First, standardization of sodium hydroxide solution and determination of acetic acid in vinegar. This is result of titration HCl with AOH. This was repeated three times for accurate result. The average volume of sodium hydroxide used is 12.68 mL. This is result of titration vinegar with AOH. This was repeated three times for accurate result. The average volume of sodium hydroxide used is 23.95 mL. Question for percent of acetic acid in vinegar. Present molarity of the NaOH solution. We calculated using an ABA over MBBB equal to A over B. The molarity of the NA solution is 0.15771. Secondly, molarity of the diluted acetic acid. Using the same equation, the molarity of the diluted acetic acid is 0.18881. Test the molarity of the concentrated vinegar is calculated 1.8881. Move to mass of acetic acid using mole time volume over 100 liter. The mole is 0.03776 mole and to get the mass we need to times with the molar mass which is 60 gram. We get the mass of acetic acid is 2.27 gram. Lastly, we need to calculate the percent of weight of the volume of acetic acid in the vinegar using mass of acetic acid over volume of the sample times 100. The percent of weight of volume of acetic acid is 22.7%. Now, we are diving into some key precautions for successful titration. First up, always start with a rough titration to estimate that elusive endpoint. It sets the stage for precision and avoids those wild overshoots. Next, let's stop mixing. Swirl that titration flask like you are in a dance off. Uniform mixing ensures a smoother reaction, preventing any sneaky concentration quirks that could mess with your endpoint. And finally, the grand finale, adding your titration. Slow and steady wins the race here. Near the endpoint, treat it like a delicate masterpiece. Drop by drop for that perfect finish. Remember these steps and your titration will be smooth as butter. To wrap up everything, in the determination of the concentration of an acid or base through titration, careful and precise techniques are essential for a curate result. Proper preparation and calibration of equipment along with the correct use of personal protective equipment PPE ensure safety and reliability in the lab. Choosing a suitable indicator that changes color at the appropriate pH range and controlling the titrant addition rate, especially near the end point, help achieve a precise determination of concentration. By following these precautionary steps, one can accurately determine the concentration of an unknown acid or base, making titration a valuable method in analytical chemistry. These are the list of references used for this video. Thank you for tuning in till the end. Are you all titration? Because our chemistry is like a perfect titration, balance and test track.